Hey guys, Andy Hape with Insulize here in Pittsburgh. And what we're going to demonstrate for you today is how to air seal an attic prior to insulating it. And if you find this video helpful, please click the like and subscribe button for us. So the first thing that we're gonna do is explain what an air leak is and why they are critical to how a house functions. So what an air leak is, is any penetration in the home's air barrier that allows outside air to infiltrate into the home and then conditioned air, which is either heated or cooled air, to exfiltrate or leak outside of the home. Now, these things are very important because when you have a large amount of uncontrolled air leakage, it means that the home is gonna have comfort issues. You're not gonna be able to heat it and cool it the way that you want to. It means that your HVAC system is gonna run much longer than you want, which is gonna mean much higher energy bills. Also means those HVAC systems are going to fail much sooner than you want them to, so there's an additional expense there. And lastly, if you have warm air from the home, home in the winter time leaking up to the attic, it's going to be taking moisture with it. And when it does that, that moist air can condense on the underside of the roof, causing a mold problem later. So if you're going to insulate your attic, what you absolutely have to do or have your contractor do is first do a really good job air sealing it. So we're upstairs now in this home's attic and you can tell looking around here that there's just a bunch of fiberglass and existing insulation. And one of the things that we're gonna demonstrate and show you guys is how we create a map and a plan for finding all of these air leaks that we know are hidden under here. And we do that by first going downstairs and mapping out on the ceiling below where the penetrations are in the ceiling. We draw a map and we'll show you that here in a second. We were just in the attic a minute or two ago and I showed you guys how there was a bunch of existing insulation on the floor and that makes it much harder to find all of the air leaks that we're looking for that we know we have to seal. So insulize, what we do first is walk through all of the rooms that are below the attic and find the penetrations that are in the ceiling and then make a map of them so that we know once our teams go up exactly where we need to go and what we need to do in order to cap those things or seal them. So follow me here. This is just a normal bathroom in a house that was built in the late 60s. To my right, above the shower, I've got what we call a bulkhead or a drop ceiling. And this is going to have a series of stud bays all around it that are open into the attic space and just allow warm air from the home to gush upward into the attic year round. This has to be capped. There's also a bathroom fan that will have gaps all around it. There's some switches in here and any place where there's a switch, there's going to be a wire that goes up. That's going to be a hole that needs sealed. And also all of these walls have what we call a top plate on all sides and those need to be sealed. Now coming across through the hallway, we have another classic thermal bypass or air leak. This is just a stairwell ceiling that's parallel to the actual stairs. And because of this, there's kind of like a giant void or a pit in the attic that you often can't see because it's covered with insulation. We know that's up there. We'll uncover it for you so you can see it and then see how we cap it from above so that we don't have air from the home constantly um, exfiltrating up through this into the attic space. Go into a bedroom. We've got a ceiling fan. This will have a junction box above it in the attic that's a penetration that needs sealed. There's a smoke alarm here that's gonna need to be sealed. And then obviously all of the walls around us the top plates and any wire holes that come up through them also need to be sealed. And what we're gonna do next is create a map of everything. And we'll show you that in just a minute. We've just made a map of the whole second floor ceiling. So now that when we go up, we know that for example, in this bedroom, there's a ceiling fan here, a smoke alarm here. In the adjoining bedroom, ceiling fan, smoke alarm, two hall lights, sterile void here, there is a master bedroom here with a bulkhead in the shower, also ceiling fan, smoke alarm, smoke alarm, ceiling fan, bulkhead here in this shower, and a bathroom fan. In this way, once we go up into the space above, even though everything is covered in insulation, we know exactly where we need to go and what we're looking for before we already get there. And that prevents us from having to remove all of the insulation from the attic, which is a huge added expense from the homeowner in addition to having to blow in that much more additional insulation later, which is also more expensive. So now that we're up above inside the attic itself, 
the next process is, well, where are these air leaks that we're looking for? And, uh, you know, normally we have respirators on and, and headlamps like these, but you wouldn't be able to hear me if I had headlamp on, or a, a respirator on. So um, if you can see below me, there's a wall here. And on top of every wall, we have what's called a top plate. And that is what that guy is. And you can see the electrical wires coming out of it. And one of the indications that we have air leakage there is you can see how black this fiberglass is. That gets black because as air rushes up through the house and escapes through these penetrations, the dust that is in that air gets trapped in it and the fiberglass acts like a filter. So our process, once we have everything mapped out, is just to go through the whole attic space and methodically seal all of the various air leaks and penetrations that we discovered on our tour of the house that we found with our map. And, you know, sometimes we use gun foam like this, but really any type of foam, great stuff or otherwise, that you find off the shelf will work just fine. You know, and as we go along, I come to this bay, you can see another top plate. Graham, if you can get the light there. And you can see how big these gaps are and it, you wouldn't imagine that air would be able to rush up these things to the extent that it can. But what happens is anywhere you've got an outlet or anything that allows warm conditioned air to get into these stud bays, then allows it to come up and escape through these plates. So we're gonna go through this attic and seal the top of every interior wall and also seal the exterior walls as well. The next thing that we're looking at is a stairwell void. And this is a classic one. We saw it, I pointed out from below, going up the stairs, the ceiling is parallel with the stairs as opposed to the ceiling above being flat. And before my crew chief got up here and very zealously threw all the fiberglass down in here, which uh, is just a way to prepare it so we can put foam board in. Before he did that, this whole area would have looked like the same yellow fiberglass as everywhere else. And the average person that um, doesn't spend their time in attics all day would never know that this is here. And we surprise a lot of homeowners whenever we go out in our sales process and we go up the stairs and say, you know, you've got a huge hole that is allowing energy to constantly just exhaust outward into your roof space. Um, so yeah, this is pretty bad. Um, you can see that the stud bays are open on both sides. There's all types of um, air penetrations into this from below, from inside the house, and year-round, this would be, uh, you know, just allowing warm air to exhaust out the top of it. My guess is that when it's snowy outside in the winter, there's a nice big melt patch right above this thing. So what we're going to do to fix this is also put uh, some two by threes, some studs going across, and then lay heavy-duty thick foam board down inside, and then seal all around it. That'll be a firm, secure, sturdy um, platform that'll be air sealed. And then we can blow our cellulose insulation over top of it when we're done to bring everything up here over to an R49. We'll show you that when it's done. We just finished air sealing the whole attic about 20 minutes ago. And this was where the stairwell void was that we looked at. And um, it's just the stairs that go from the first floor to the second floor directly under us. Whenever they built the ceiling, they made the ceiling parallel with the stairs instead of flat, and it left a huge void here. There were open stud bays that were able to vent conditioned air directly up into the attic space year round. And all that we did is we put a couple of uh, reinforcement studs beneath this. And this is just one inch thick foam board. It's not designed to support weight any more than the drywall is, but it, what it will do is keep any conditioned air from uh, coming up from below and getting into the attic space. This is permanent. We'll be able to blow 15 inches of fresh cellulose insulation on top of it whenever we're done. And then this is another um, bulkhead that was down here that was kind of connected to it. And this went into another shower that had a drop ceiling below and a recessed light into it. And again, all that we did is cap it with one inch thick foam board and then seal around the perimeter with foam. Down here, this is a, the bathroom fan and that's vented outside through the roof. And if you can see the foam on it, it might look kind of weird to the untrained eye, but we do that to prevent any risk that that exhaust hose could ever become detached from that fan. Because when we get up in these attics, we see the exhaust hose become detached all the time. 
And at that point, you've got uh, warm, steamy air venting directly into the attic, which often causes a mold problem. So um, that's it. The rest of the attic is sealed. We'll look at one other thing over here. This is just another top plate that we sealed with a different type of foam, but as long as it's foam, it all works. This stuff cures a little bit more slowly. That's about the only difference. And then all around the perimeter, all the, the wire penetrations like these, the top plates, the plumbing stack pipes, everything else in this whole attic that would have been able to allow conditioned air from the home to vent up into the attic and escape to the outside has been sealed. So at this point, the attic is now ready to be insulated. And we'll show you what that looks like when that's done. This is the same attic after it's been fully insulated to an R49 rating with cellulose insulation. And because it was fully air sealed and properly ventilated, this homeowner will never have to worry about a mold issue in their attic while also enjoying a far more energy efficient and comfortable home. If you found this video helpful, please click the like and subscribe buttons.